Hey friends, Ari Koenuma here. Thanks for tuning in. So this will be the final episode in my series about home recording studio. By now we have the room picked out, we have the audio treatment, we have the computer, we have the digital audio workstation software, we have the speakers, we have the microphones, so we have the basic building blocks. So I just wanted to share with you on top of those basic building blocks where I spent a little extra to beef up my studio. So like everybody else, I started basically uh, with audio interface with microphone preamps and plugging my microphones into that. And I, I think that's a great starting point. There's nothing wrong with that. But when I compared my recordings to like a professional ones, there was clearly a difference in terms of audio um, quality. And among the things I noticed is how the professional studios seem to have this really sharp, defined image or quality to their sound, which my home studio recordings sounded a little bit blurry, like they um, seem to kind of get a little mushy or when it gets dense especially, it just becomes hard to, to, to it sounds congested or muddy. And I think that some of it is definitely my EQing skill is not being good enough to carve out the unnecessary um, unnecessary frequencies. But fundamentally I felt like there was something different, obvious, well, obviously, right? I mean, I'm in home studio on one hand and they are in million dollar studios on the other hand. But I also felt that SM57 being a prime example, my cheap microphones is really not the game breaker or deal breaker here. Um, professional studios use them, right? So what is the difference? And then I had experience with a couple of different recording studios and I really decided that mic preamp might be where that difference is. So um, in addition to my audio interface, I did get myself a Focusrite ISA Pre, the two channel one, and I've been pleased with my investment in that. While my microphones are very much still on entry level microphones, none of my microphones are about $500, I think I really get a good result with a dedicated mic preamp. Now, mic preamp is another thing that could go from like $300 to $3,000, so you could spend any amount of money here, but um, microphone preamp plays a very important role in that you, the microphone's input is very weak, so you boost it so that it, when it gets loud enough, when it hits the tape, so to speak, and then I think in that boosting or making it louder, it, it obviously imparts its own mark on the sound, and the resulting recorded sound has differences. Um, generally speaking, audio interface microphones, microphone preamps are super clean and thus kind of on the sterile and boring side and I keep finding myself to add like a tube sound or old console sound or some other coloring things in my mix and microphone preamp can do a little bit of that um, although you might have to pay quite a bit to get to one where you know with a, whether it's API or uh, Great River or um, other um, uh, brand name microphone preamps um, you may have to pay quite a bit for that my focus right isn't quite there in terms of giving a character necessarily I just like, uh, but it's less sterile, true, so I think it's kind of a halfway between those, like a clean but basic kind of preamp versus like more colorful and more uh, pronounced, but you know, definitely better audio quality overall kind of preamp. So in addition to that, yeah, I have spent money on uh, plugins, obviously. Uh, these days, I think a lot of DOS come with really great plugins out of the box and you can make some great recordings based on that. 
That being said, I feel like again, where I sort of hear the difference between higher end studios and mine, the first thing that came to mind is the reverb. Um, reverb is a um, thing where if the reverb doesn't sound good, there's not much you can do to make it sound good by tweaking the settings whether it sounds good or it doesn't in my at least in my opinion um, so you just have to look for a reverb plugin that you you're like oh wow you know the, the thing about reverb is that when you turn up really loud and you totally hear a reverb really drenched and then you but but when it's right you kind of relax and go oh yeah that sounds good right and if not, then you kind of start tweaking and here and there and stuff like that. And it's totally a personal subjective thing. And ease of use is definitely also a part of reverb plugins um, formula or, or ingredient that you need to watch out for. But um, yeah, I think that reverb plugging is definitely some place where I think it's worth spending money. Other than that, I feel like... Uh, Compressors and aforementioned coloring preamp um, kind of thing, saturation sometimes it's called, or distortion. Um, those are plugins that I use fairly often because I'm into greasy rock and roll recordings, fairly old school. Um, so I like to have lots of options in those ranges, um, and I've spent a little money. On that one as well but there are some really good affordable choices in those ranges so I feel like you don't have to spend a lot of money there just that um, the the compressors and those coloring things um, again there's definitely ease of use kind of thing but as soon as you put them on you hear the sound and it sounds good or it doesn't and um, you just want to have different options. They, they, they definitely sort of work differently depending on the source. Some compressors work great on drums, may not be so good on vocals, vice versa. So having more options on in those areas uh, really don't hurt. Other than that, cables and stands are nothing to uh, uh, overlook. If you have obviously terrible cables, your audio uh, quality is as good as your weakest link. Um, stands, I, I, I need to buy one because one of my stands is getting kind of worn out the way it just kind of drags because of the weight of the mic. And that's, again, you know, any kind of frustration that can come from devices and tools not working is definitely a creativity killer. So you want to, uh, you don't want to skimp on accessories. Uh, and get something that is dirt cheap. You want to get decent quality ones so that it doesn't get in the way of your creative flow when you are recording. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks again for watching. I hope you really enjoyed my home recording studio series. I intentionally stayed away from mentioning specific gear so that this can serve as a kind of a timeless thought process guide in putting a home recording studio together. So if you or if you know of anybody who is about to take on this journey, please mention this series to them. Alright, thanks again. I'll see you next time.